You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello and welcome to All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral, with me, Steve Sidwell, and you, Joe Cole. Uh, joining us today is a man with one of the most incredible stories in football. He came through the ranks at Arsenal and represented England at every level up until under-21s. He was a fan's favourite at Birmingham City and Bolton Wanderers before a cardiac arrest on the pitch at Tottenham put an end to his career and nearly ended his life. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have him on the show. Let's give a warm welcome to Fabrice Mwamba. Big man, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks Appreciate for coming down. Was no. the journey good or getting down okay? It was straightforward, straightforward. Good, uh, so you, you're based up north, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually up north. I'm happy to see that, and I, I lived there for over 10, 15 years now, so I wouldn't come down to live down south. So. It's unusual, isn't it, for a London lad to settle up north. Yeah. Usually, like we're like we're like homing pigeons. We come yeah. home, don't we? Wherever come. you go, just yeah. Yeah. London yeah. is that cool. That's yeah. I, I just feel like he's the kids growing up there now, so they all set, we made a lot of friends there. So I, I, I don't think it would be unfair of them to move away and yeah. come down and start all over again yeah. because I've decided to move down. Yeah, oh, fair point. Well, look, fair I said point. in the intro that you know it was an in incredible story that you've had through football. I want to take yeah. you right back to the beginning. That yeah. um, you, 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 you came to the country, you represented England all the way through, captain mm -hmm. England under 19 side. Um, but when you arrived in England, England as an 11 year old, yeah. you, you couldn't speak English, is that right? Yeah, because obviously I was born in, in the Congo uh, where we speak mainly French. Right. And English, just like in England where you get French as a, a lesson in the, in the class and that's how we happened in the Congo. But we never really take it seriously like that. It was yeah. just a, a one-hour lesson per week. So when I came to England, the only word I would say was, hello, how are you? That's as far as I can say in terms of yeah. speaking-wise. Yeah. So to come to England with no word of English, uh, to start school, you know, wow. uh, the first day of school was just was too much for me because all you hear is yeah. speaking too fast and I yeah. didn't understand anything. Yeah. And did they, sorry for a brief, did they just... Put, drop, put you in the school and then leave you to your own devices or was there someone who... So I had I, I had somebody with me in like a helper that would help yeah, me yeah, translate yeah. stuff but I also had a dictionary next to me so every right. word they would say I have to look into a dictionary so I can try to understand yeah, and yeah, yeah. translate it to French and make it easier for me to understand. Wow. Yeah, that was a... That was that I did that for about two years then I become more fluent in year nine and yeah. that's what I become... So, football, so playing football must have been such a, you know, that's mm. how you communicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. international language, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah with football is what, what helped, because I was quite tall, and uh, I don't know you know this lad, Bradley Johnson, who was up. Yes, so yeah, yeah. Bradley was yeah. the yeah, above me in my school. Yeah, yeah. And wow. so he he always told me the tall African boy, that's yeah, Fabrice. Yeah. So if you go around the school, say, who's that tall African boy, Fabrice? That's when I knew, that's how I made a lot of friends in school, because yeah, of, yeah. I played football and I made a lot of friends. And... It helped me in terms of the language barrier, in terms yeah. of to just to connect and share and express myself. Because I was very a road talent. I just wanted to play football. Mm. Yeah. And it, it wasn't like I woke up one morning, I said, I, become a, I want to become a footballer. Yeah. I never dreamed of that. Yeah. Never, never. Because <clears throat> I said, as an African father, they always want you to, your children to be a doctor, yeah. lawyer, yeah, yeah, yeah. that type of thing. And for me, it was just the same. But football yeah. was just a way of be just going out there and enjoying myself. Yeah, yeah. You, you excelled academically at school, like yeah. you said there, just through mm -hmm. the way your upbringing. Um, where, where was the, the period or the point where you thought, you know, football, it could be the avenue or the, the course I'm going to go down? When Arsenal took me on and then my dad sat me down and I said, listen, this, this is serious. Then what I require from you is as long as your school stuff is taken care of. Mm -hmm. Wow then you're able to play as long as you want. And what age was that? That was about 14. Right. Exactly, exactly. As long as I don't yeah. hear you getting in trouble to school, as long as you're making sure that everything that you need to be do, you've done it properly, you can play as mm. long as you want. That's when I was like, okay, I'll give it a good go. But it wasn't, it didn't put any pressure on me just anyway. Yeah. As long as you enjoy it, that's all I want you to do. Yeah. Enjoy it. And then after that, we'll see what happened. Yeah. It's the yeah. best way, mate, isn't it? You mentioned um, Arsenal there, and is it, is, it, is it true that you wasn't actually scouted for Arsenal? You, uh, went, you went to watch a friend? I never play? got scouted. You know how kids yeah. play on a Saturday yeah. and somebody say, oh, this... No, yeah. what happened is that we had a guy who was from Sierra Leone, very right. gifted, and yeah. I mean, very, very gifted. His name is Rashid Kamara. I know Rashid will watch this. So Rash was at Arsenal, uh, yeah. Arsenal willing to do anything for him yeah, i mean yeah, anything yeah. anything for him because they felt like this kid would be the one that will come through the academy and break yeah, and go yeah, forward yeah. so he 
somehow managed to convince um, Steve Leonard to say, come, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Come, <laughs> yeah. come see my friend. And, and you know, let him train with us. Yeah. Steve said, you know what, bring him over and let's see what yeah, will happen. Yeah. So here's me turning up a Hayland before everybody else. Yeah. So I got on time thinking, they all know that Fabrice is going to come train with us. Yeah. But I said, oh, my name is Fabrice. And they're like, who are you? I said, hey, my name is Fabrice. I'm asked to come and play with you lot. So nobody told him about, uh, nobody told him about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, oh, okay. Then Steve's like, okay, don't worry. Let's just give you one training session, see where you are. So yeah. I trained, then, you know, literally I was out of it. I, this, the, the kid was so far advanced technically, yeah. tactically. I was just mm. running around and trying to, Keep up with everything. They're like, listen, you're not quite ready for us, but we'll keep you for time being, and then we'll see where you are in about four or three weeks. Time. Then I just, because where my parents live and to where, hey, to where Helen is about five minutes drive, yeah. walking wise about 20 minutes. So I made it, because I wanted to play so bad, Yeah. I wanted, I started going there by myself every day. Yeah. Regardless if the wow. coach is there or not. That's amazing. So I, I'll go in there and I see Steve. It's like, oh, I want to train. But he said, about, can we train on anything? He said, okay, come outside. Then we'll work on my touches. We'll work on anything, anything. Yeah. So by the time that they were able to decide to sign me, I was made so much improvement. Liam's like, okay, we, we'll give you another six weeks and we'll see where you are. Yeah. And again, that's the same thing. I just kept, because I was cl- the training ground was closer to me, yeah, I made him my own opportunity. So I'm gonna just work yeah. on myself you, and just. You had that mindset even as a teenager, yeah, like yeah. A young teenager. That's incredible. Yeah, that that, that's just like with even my schoolwork. I was just like, because it's there, I might as well make the most of it. Mm. So I just plug away, and and then Liam managed to say, "Yo, we'll keep you. Give me a, a two year academy contract, and never look back since then." Really. I mean, you, you you've quickly established a name for yourself. You know, being in with the England yeah. ranks and that, but. You, you was thrown into the England, uh, sorry, the the Arsenal set up, first team set up quite yeah. quickly as well. What was it like as a youngster going in and being around the likes of Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp? So us coming up, we heard his name mm. and and stuck. And, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Harpers, those yeah. names that you hear about, you're yeah. thinking, okay. But they were saying that they were good guys. They work hard. They never made the grade. They went to do so 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 many so many good things. So you're like, yeah. okay, because at that time you know. City, like they never really gave academy lads a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asking more favor the French boys. Mm. Yeah. And most, you're like, well, if the guys can go in and make the living out of the game and go yeah. on to do great, then yeah. you you aspire to those guys, you know. Yeah. So to train the first team was amazing, Joe. I'm not gonna yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. like a dream come true. There's yeah. me from the Congo, and four five years down the line, he's me and Thierry having a laugh and a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. wow, this is like it's gone that quickly, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and. One thing I find, which is just the intensity of training with the first team, yeah. it's yeah. just, and once you have a taste of it, yeah. it's very difficult to go back and train with your mate. You're thinking, yeah. I want that more than this one, yeah. you know? So, and and I, I enjoy that the most because that was like, that even gave me that extra tune in my head saying, you yeah. know what, if you really want to be around here, you need to work hard in your game yeah. and, and just be better. Was, no. pa- was Patrick there when you... When yeah, you Patrick, yeah. yeah. Patrick, Patrick, you, Patrick, you must have... You must have looked at him in your position you played him for. Yeah. Uh, so said, Patrick is my... To me, to my eyes, is the best player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. feel like this guy is six two six three, and yeah. he, he dangled away through and, you know, they used to give us like a, a video of Patrick. So every yeah. player in your position, mm. you get a video of them, you yeah. watch their game. Yeah. I had Patrick. I watched about... That video I watched about a hundred times. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just because... I could tell, to the, it's, it's gone as far, yeah. I can mimic how you talk, yeah, yeah, how you yeah. walk and everything. Yeah, like, yeah. like, it's like, you get crazy. I said, no, I just, that was my favorite footballer, yeah, yeah. you know? And to, to go train with the first team and mm. to train with Ash, Dennis, Thierry, yeah. those people that you keep hearing about now, like, yeah. you know, you train with them. It's just like, every single time you go across, you're thinking, I want more of this. Yeah, you know, yeah. want more of this. Looking back now, do you, like again there with with Vieira, do you th- do you feel as though you got mm. as much out of him being in and around him in terms of the speaking to him and asking him questions, or um, was you a bit shy at the time? I, I was a bit shy because obviously some of the first things were very reserved. Yeah, you know, but it was more like a, I enjoyed just being in their presence and knowing yeah. what they, how hard they work, how hard they want to work. Yeah, 
because every training session was yeah that's the biggest eye opener isn't yeah, it yeah. seeing what the, even the top top, top players level. put in day in day out but as, you, as a youngster yeah do you know, do you know sorry probably, so I'll just go back your, both of your times coming through Arsenal I, I liken that to when I was at Chelsea because at the time when you were at Arsenal the first team were probably if not the best in Europe they were one yeah. or two weren't they that yeah. Arsenal team was incredible so it must have been so tough for you to 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 break through so you've had to go on your different routes I liken that to at Chelsea during my time we were one of the best sides in Europe and the young lads is like at 18, 19 you can't be better than Arjun Robin or yeah. Didier Drogba you just it's a, you, unless you're an absolute like a special kid and if now Arsenal you look at the thing now now Arsenal have dropped down you're seeing players like Saka Smith Rowe Martinelli coming through yeah. because They've given that opportunity. Like, do you do you think for Brisbane, given the opportunity, at Arsenal and you Sids as well, like a bit of a run of games in in that lower level? Do you reckon you could have could have got your place in there and got in, or were they just them players were just too elite? Yeah, I mean, when, I mean, I was a couple of years older than Fabrice, and the way we all look at it, that that U team, we had the best U team in yeah. Arsenal's history. Yeah, yeah. Like, it physically was like we lost one game in two or three years against yeah. Arsenal City. <clears throat> we lost five 0 Donny, I'll give us a rollicking. We won every cup, every competition, yeah, back yeah. to back youth cups. Yeah. Yeah. And the way we look at it is that we was just at the right place at the yeah. wrong time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, for sure. Because I, I couldn't break in front of Mami Petit, Vieira, then Edu, mm. then Gilberto Silva. Yeah. Mm. I wasn't I wasn't ready then. I yeah. had to go elsewhere to play my trade, go a few steps down the ladder yeah. to come back up like a brief done and like a lot yeah, of other places. Yeah. Now, I agree with Sid, I just think the timing that the guys that now is not the quality they've got is not that they had before. Mm. Hence why mm. the opportunities made more open to them. You know, it's yeah. like, we we had Seth coming in. Mm. Seth trained with the under eighteen one mm. time. Yeah. That was him. Yeah. Could you tell then that he oh, was yeah. Sesk was Seska put in that category of of special Sesk is probably arguably the, he's in the talk of the best midfielders we've seen, isn't yeah. he? In the last yeah. 10, 15 yeah. years. Like so that, so them players, they're special. They go in anywhere. Like, but like, I'm talking us normal players. Like, you need the right opportunities at the right time. Like, for sure. Even if I was in your youth team, like, as much I was playing regularly at West Ham mm. at 17, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to play for Arsenal's first team yeah. at that age. Well, I was playing well for West Ham or Man or Man United because they were the two best teams. So mm. It is opportunity and time enough. But then you, we also had the issue, like not issue. They had people like Diaby or, or Song. Mm. You see them come through, you're like, well, it's not better than what we have. Yeah. But Arsenal was patient enough. Yeah. Yeah. They trained more with the first team. Yeah. Never really played a reserve game. Mm -hmm. So the chance yeah. of them playing the first team was more higher than yeah. somebody who's been there longer with just playing a reserve. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point, you know, because I've seen that happen at a lot of clubs I'm at. You know, when players get brought in, it's frustrating. Like, and when they're not special talents, yeah. like, that, the RB was a good player and Song was a good player. Went on yeah. to have, they went on to have decent careers, but they're not as, they're not, better than what you've got but yeah. because someone's brought them in yeah. at football clubs yeah. someone's put their name on him and gone right he's we're going to spend three four million on him you know so automatically they get favoured don't they they get pushed through I think that's changing a little bit now I've noticed that at Chelsea I think like the the, the playing field between the lads like your Mason Mounts mm -hmm. and Reese James at seven it's, it's all done do you know what I mean yeah. and if like they sometimes Chelsea bring lads in at like 16 17 and if they're not good enough after two years, they'll wipe their hands with them and move them on. Yeah. There's no one there, like self-preservation, going. Mm. I've, 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 well, he needs to get in. The, he, we need to give him another contract because he needs to play. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's changing a little bit. But what we had at Arsenal, Sid will tell you what. Someone said, Liam, we get the Irish boys. Yeah. Arsenal, we we'll bring the French boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you can tell like he wants to bring these lot come. Yes. Mm. Or Arsenal's like. I'm bringing mine, regardless of what anybody said. Yeah. And they'll let them mm. play, you know. It was like, you're there, you're thinking, yeah. I always remember this conversation I had with Arsen. He said to me, I can't guarantee you I'll give you a spot in my squad. Yeah. But if you can go and prove yourself, we might see, we might review the situation. Yeah. And I, I looked at her thinking, you know, I might as well just go on loan and just mm. give myself a chance and yeah. see what happened. Mm. You know, and the best, that's the best decision ever made. Yeah. So, so that was that the breaking point there, that conversation, because you then went on loan to Birmingham. Yeah. Like a lot of kids have to do if they can't sort of make the grade of that, mm. that parent club, they need to go out in yeah. the shop window to go, right, this is an eye opener for yeah. Arsenal to see, yeah. or it's more for the world to see that 
I'm, I'm um, the top player and I can go on and that and that play. was the week before they got to Austria, where for pre-season pre-season yeah. where Arsenal take the coldest the coldest squad that he's gonna use for the rest of the season. Yeah, and the rest will be even stay in the reserve and they'll move on. Yeah, and he just said to me, "Listen, you know, it's down to you. If you want to go, great. If yeah. not, then I can't guarantee be my squad." I just knew then. Then I was like, you know, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's mm. it for me. But I'm. Do I have any regret? Never. No. Mm. I think that's. No. I always tell a young player, if you everything, anytime you have an opportunity to go on loan, don't even think about it twice. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. what level it is. Go and play football, innit? What you take out of it, you ain't get anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the club suited you so well. You went loan to Birmingham. Yeah. You had a great couple of seasons there. You, you got promoted to the back to the Premier League yeah. under Steve Bruce. Yeah. I mean. Mm. We all know Bruce has a great name yeah, for himself. Yeah. He's come under a bit of stick at Newcastle. What was your relationship like with Steve Bruce so as, as a young So when we got we got along, it was myself, Nicholas Benner, and mm. uh, Seb Larson. So, all from Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, wow. all same time. Wow. That's why they've Could changed the rule. Yeah, that's why they've changed the rule. You can't have more than one player yeah. in the same club. Yeah. So we went in at the same time. Yeah. So me and Nicholas used to live opposite each other's apartment, and yeah. Seb used to live about a road next to us. So right. it was easier for us mm. to meet up in the morning and then. Go to training. Yep. Yeah. And if all of three of us start in 11, great. If one of us not playing, we just encourage them. And what Steve really did with, with me that helped a lot is that I'll go in there. I was the first one to get in. But he never really played me. So I went mm-hmm. to see him. Like, I said, Gaffer, you brought me here. You promised me I want to play. What's going on? I said, listen, I'm just going to, you know, trying to get you to speed of stuff. And, mm. and it worked so well that by the time Steve put me into the team, mm. he was able to say, as you know, in the championship, it's five, six games a yeah, month. Yeah. So yeah. Give me four good games, I'll leave you out for next two. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. In my head, I'm thinking, if I give the guy for four top game, yeah. the next two games, I'll see, I'll see out and I'll come back in again. Yeah. And it was just, they just knew how to yeah. put me in, put me out, put oh, me in, yeah, put yeah. it out. By the time we get to March, I was able mm. to play eight games with Van. Yeah. You know, and it works well, well for me. Management. That's good management, yeah. Um, did you, <clears> as, an, as an older man now, yeah. did you... A bit, oh, well, it would have frustrated me because at 79, you want to you play want every play. time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looking back now, you can see the sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, listen, even when I see him, I don't even call him Steve Bruce, I call him Gaffer. Yeah. Mm. I was like, hi, Gaffer. I'll do that with all my gaffers. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, yeah. And, because, and also, he was just, he was very protective of me, just when to sign me, when to put me in, when not to put me in. Yeah. And as you said, as a young player, you get frustrated thinking, well, I've had a good game last week. Yeah. Why you take me out? Why not just keep me in and let yeah. me play? But it was just, he knew what was best for me and I said I'm very thankful for, yeah. for Bruce taking me on really. 2008, Bolton yeah. come knocking, obviously you were playing exceptionally well, was it hard, hard but all to leave Birmingham to go to Bolton then or did it just seem to just... It, it just you? like, we got relegated a week, week after that, mm. Karen called me, mm. Karen Braid said, Fabrice, you know, you're young, there's an opportunity out there, would you like to go? It's like, Okay, let me sit down, assess the whole situation, then spoke to the in, the relevant people. It made a perfect sense. Then I was like, okay, we might as well go. And yeah. then I, I went, I said thank you to Karen. I even went to see uh, Sullivan and Gold. Yeah, I said, yeah. listen, I, thank you for even you bringing me into the club because I didn't. Nobody yeah. gave me a chance. That's class. So, very humble. That's, very yeah, humble. Yeah, that's classy, yeah. mate. I, I, I've got so much love for Karen seriously because yeah. even in my first. Pro contract as, as a Premier League player, she yeah. went above beyond. Yeah. At that time, there, yeah. for, to make sure that I, I looked after, they look after me. And, yeah. and I said, even now when I see her, I just say hello and everything. Yeah, you know, yeah, very respectful yeah. like that. So and then we had, they agree a deal by the time I think it was five point five million, and yeah. then I'm just happy. And but there. that says a lot for your character as a young man, for Bruce. You know, your yeah. upbringing, because you know, for a young man to to think to go and thank. Yeah. Thank a chair. I've never done that. So no. you know what I mean? we, as a young now as an older man, yeah. you, you, re, you yeah. mature. But as a young man, that wouldn't have crossed my mind. That's yeah. That says a lot for your character. But yeah, good. You, you go to you go to Bolton, yeah. and again, it's another great move where it just seems yeah. to click. It was, was Bolton a club where you just fitted in straight away? You just sort of got <laughs> got yeah, running like, into the, into the team. Signed for Bolton, and two days later we start preseason. So I came back to London and make sure they pick, they pack everything else. It was sunny. By the time I got to Bolton, it was great, dark, <laughs> miserable. I've never seen a city that it rained every single day, every day. Like, I was like, I said to my dad, I said, did I make the right, right choice? Here? Because this is just, it's draining me out here. You know, I said, no, you just have to get out there and just head down and just yeah, yeah. do it. Every single day, 
Yeah. Wow. He just rain. Yeah. But I walked in that change room. You've got UC. Mm. You've got Kevin Nolan. Yeah. You've got Jayla Sam for the rest of peace. Yeah. You've got Kevin Davis. Yeah. Good dressing room. Yeah. Proper men. Yeah. And I mean like men. They yeah. weren't even you coming in there, you know what to expect. Yeah. And those guys took ball into the Europa, Europa League, mm. go close to doing so well, go close to relegation. So they ain't they know how much Bolton mean to play in the Premier League. So it's almost like you buy by what we have to do, you know, and I just buy by the culture of it. Yeah. And it was incredible. In- incredible. I mean, there's not one time where you're thinking, I made the wrong choice. No. It was just, yeah. even though you got 13, 14, 20, 10th, 11th, but every single time you walked that pitch there, because the one that impressed me the most, he was in, tr- in the training one for about two weeks, then he left to go into Sunderland. Hmm. I knew he was good, but I didn't know he was this good. Juve. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the footballers you're thinking, how you even play for Bolton? You have to ask mm. yourself, what are you doing in here? You're yeah. in the wrong mm. club. Like, really? Well, that in, good? well, in 2002, yeah. he was probably the most sought after young player in the world after yeah. the yeah. World Cup. You know, the, yeah. the talent was in there. I think it maybe his mindset mm. or something. Joe, I'm looking and thinking, you're mm. in the like you're playing for the wrong team. In you, terms of what mm. way? What did you see straight away that you? That we, we've been training for two weeks. He came back in two weeks after everybody. He was the fittest, the strongest. Wow. Technically, ridiculous. Mm. I said to him, I said, you're in like in the wrong place. You're supposed to be like. Somewhere up there. Yeah. He's like, me, I'm just, what you expect me to do? Like, mm. But he's a, he's a type of player that you need to have in a team when you play away from home for, in a very difficult environment. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. knows yeah. where to suck the pressure off the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's very, he's, he handled the ball very oh, well, didn't very he? Good. Yeah. Good, he's a good player. Very Obviously, good player. he had a, the baggage, didn't he? Just mm. Oh, yeah. Band, yeah, yeah. Obviously, the, ba- the yeah, baggage. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, do you reckon yeah. that really... Yeah, that hampered his career. I mean, yeah. he still had a, a, an amazing yeah, 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 career. Yeah. Things he played it where he, and titles that he won. If them. if Juffy had the mindset of Ronaldo, yeah, it would be right up there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and listen, that's big praise because you've you've seen the, the elite. You've yeah. seen the train with Arsenal. Haven't you? You've seen the Omri's and the Burkhams and that. Yeah. Juffy had the mindset of Ronaldo, yeah. it would be right up at the top yeah. top of the tree because he's got everything going for him. Everything. Yeah. See, I kid you not. We've started training yet yeah, two weeks. We've been. Mm. Up and down. Yeah. He's coming two weeks later than everybody. He was just... Really? Like, is this like... See, I ask him. I yeah. said, you're in the wrong place. Wow. You should yeah. be like somewhere else. Oh, what are, we, are we comparing him to someone like a Thierry in terms of that, that ability? Yeah. Really? It is that's like, amazing. Like, mm. I played against him but never knew like seeing day in, day out even for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 it's incredible. He is incredible. But yeah. And also, one thing I picked up from Bolton, the level of competition you have from... You have UC Escalana. Yeah. You have the goalkeeper Ali Abzi, yeah. who went from weekend. Yeah. Mm. Them two, it was like a war every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They push each other on every did, single did, day. Did UC have his um he uh, watched the watched the horse racing at the back of the coach with the chariots? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen this? <laughs> this is Icelandic horse racing. I'm watching him and it's like <laughs> they're on chariots or something. It's like, they're not, not on top of the horse, they're behind the horse. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> so it's not like a little children. Oh, a, no, it ain't no, children, no, mate. No, no, it's no, some, no, no, some no, chariots he, going. He, 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 uh, I love Big UC, but he, that was some strange sport he was watching, oh, yeah. And he'd be loving it. He'd be like, go on. Yeah, it's mental. Now, you, you see he's a top professional, but they, yeah. him and Abzi push each other on yeah, every yeah. time. Every was, was Big Sam the, the, the manager there? Like, Owen Coyle? Sam, I came in, Sam left, and yeah. we had Gary Mixon. Gary Mixon, yeah. Difficult, difficult man. Listen, Gary brought me into the club, mm. but his way of managing is very, very difficult. Mm. Mm. Gary doesn't speak to you. Yeah. He shouts at I've you. I've heard. Yeah. And you can only, you know and I know, you can only pick that up for so long mm. to the point where your brain just literally shut down and like, I'm not yeah. interested anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then we had Owen Koyo. Yeah. Owen wants to be involved in everything we're doing. Yeah. So every five aside, he want to be involved. Whether you yeah. like some, that's that's my style of coaching, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, I know Owen, you mean. But Owen, Owen, if he's gonna drop me, he said, "Listen, I'll drop you this weekend." You know, the team not doing particularly well. Mm. Whatever the reason, if the reason, if we lose next week, you get back in the team. He went to City to say the same thing to City. Yeah. Say the same thing to you. Yeah. But then the team lose, he put the same team again. You can't, that's no. one thing you have to, as a manager, you have to like, you have to have like, sh- be straight yeah, and yeah. honest, didn't you? Because yeah. lads will pick up, you can't be a people pleaser. No, no. you can't. I mean, that's that, sorry, going off on a tangent, but like, that's, I think, I'm, 
my characteristics, I think I struggle with that because I want to, I want the best. Whenever I'm in company with people, I want the best for everyone. Yeah. So, so that's a but that's a hard, difficult thing as a manager. Yeah. Because you've got to have hard conversations with people. Yeah, you might, he, he might. It's best just to say, Sidney, you're not playing this week. You ain't been good enough for the last two, three weeks. Yeah. And that's what I'll keep working hard. Like. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And you'll hate the manager when they say it. Yeah. Or you won't agree with them, but you, it's, after you've calmed down for 10, 15 minutes, you respect the honesty, yeah, don't you? Yeah. But then, as you said, as in the change room, we all talk. Yeah. yeah. So when you start, we all talking to each other, thinking, well, it's the only thing that everybody that's in yeah. most like. Kind of lose respect mm. for him. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, like, he he was good at what he was. Yeah. Mm. And he helped the club, you know, to what it yeah. is now. Right, Fabrice, it's time for what really happened. So we're going to go back to a moment in your career that we yeah. want to know more about. So obviously, we yeah. want to ask you and take you back to the 17th of March, 2012, yeah. uh, when you collapsed on the pitch at White Hart Lane. Tell us your memories about that day. So the recollection started the day before and, and we train in the morning and because we usually take the train from Stockport to come to London mm -hmm. so my house is not far from Stockport so after training drove my car back to the house Mrs. picked me up took the car took me and dropped me to the station mm -hmm. so after the game he would just after the game she'll pick me up so everything was, was fine there's never it was not a problem with me no no symptom whatsoever mm -hmm. We travelled in, 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 in the train down to London, spoke to my dad, sorted out his ticket so he knows where to pick it up and everything else. I said, and I said again, there was a, a, not a sign that something's going to happen. No, 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 no was, weather, nothing. Nothing, nothing this, at all. This was an evening game, this right? Is a, this is an evening game. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, <clears throat> in the evening, uh, the manager spoke about the team, how we're going to play, how we're going to set up and everything else. The next day, spoke to my dad again. Uh, we went for a usual walk where you, you come out just to get fresh up a little bit. Yeah. Had, a, had a sleep, then travel to the stadium. And again, no problem whatsoever. Yeah. We go to the ground, have a look around, got changed, and they're just exciting to go play. And the game started, there was no issue. But it got to the point where, like, in the so cities in front of me, so if I get mm. to see cities, there's one city there, there's another him. Mm. So my vision just become wow. blurry. Really? Yeah. And then out of nowhere, they just went, bang. That was that was me. So that's just, that was the, the only that, warning that was like the vision, yeah, the, the the blurred, a blurred the, vision, and that and was that's it. it. And that's me yeah. gone. And um, obviously, I was I was out for seventy eight minutes. There's picture that you see where. Sorry, uh, sorry, your heart stopped beating for seventy eight minutes. Yes. Wow. So there's a picture that you see where like they're like they carry me all of that stuff. I, I wasn't aware of nothing like that. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. And as I, said, I always say, I was fortunate enough that I had doctor from Spurs, doctor from Bolton, mm. I had an ambulance which was about 10 seconds away from me. Mm. I had a cardiologist in the stand who came to watch the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like when everything happened, they all just came together. They just mm. did an amazing job to get me from the pitch to the hospital, uh, to the mm. ambulance, ambulance to the, ho to the hospital. Wow. So, w was you, I mean, was you pronounced dead? At any time in, in that in, in that I, I spoke moment to your heart the, stopped or I spoke to the doctor I said, Why did you guys carry on? It just we felt the need to carry on. Mm. So you were physically dead on yeah. the pitch? Yeah, so they said they, they put a something in in me and they tried to do what they had to do. Um but if this would have happened in my house, I wouldn't yeah. never be here. Well, well does do you does that fill you with a sense of sense of purpose, Fabrice? Like because mm. you like you said you, Anywhere else in in yeah. your life, you, maybe you wouldn't be here. Yeah. Does it, do you feel like, how does that make you feel, like knowing that, do you feel like there's a purpose for you now? Of course. I, yeah. I, 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 first of all, I'm just grateful that I'm alive. Yeah. Let alone anything else. Yeah. Hence why when people ask me, oh, you must miss football, I say, no, 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 no. There's a bigger yeah. thing out there yeah. to miss than yeah. kicking the ball. Yeah. You know, and in terms of going forward, I'm just happy that. I had the best team that could have asked and wished for on that mm. day. Not every single time you mm. walk on the street, you've got four doctors mm. and mm. ambulance and a cardiologist near, near you. Yeah. You know? well, I think what, well, I mean, I'm really intrigued for this answer. I'm sure a lot of listeners are as well, but you said you remembered before, double yeah. vision, yeah. collapsing, no recollection of nothing else. Mm. What was your first memories of waking up? And where, and where, where do you remember that? So I woke up, um, I didn't, it happened on Saturday to wake up. I didn't wake up to Monday. Right. 
And when I wake up on Monday, they weren't sure if I was able to remember anybody. Yeah. Because I was that yeah. Yeah, for so yeah, long, yeah, they weren't yeah, yeah. in my brain. Yeah. So I woke up, remember seeing a, the doctor in front of me, and he asked me, what's your name? I said, Fabrice, what'd you do? I said, I kick football. Are you good? I'm okay. That's <laughs> um, <laughs> being humble again. And uh, I asked him, what's going on? I said, I'll tell you later. Then he, he left. Then I see my dad coming in. But nobody wanted to tell me yeah. how serious he was. Yeah, yeah. They all just were happy that I, re- I remember them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were yeah, worried yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't remember anybody. Yeah. yeah. And I see the missus, I was like, what's going on here? So said, oh, no, it's okay, don't worry. I said, has... I had Joshua, my son, he's like, he's okay. So yeah, he's okay. But nobody didn't want to tell me nothing. Yeah. And I went back to sleep. But on a, the following day, then I see so many people coming in, people that I've not seen in a long time. I see Ash coming in. I'm like, yeah. what Ash is doing in here? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I see guys are coming in, I see Liam. Yeah. But nobody wanna actually like tell me what had happened. What happened yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Did you have the urge to ask at all? I wanted you- to. But they're like, you scared? I, I was scared a little yeah. bit, but she, she was like, listen, I'll tell you when the time is right. And Is that protocol, sorry, for the medical, like, do you know someone like yourself who's, who's had something, like a big trauma like yeah. that? Yeah. They don't want to hit you with a new straight away, they just want to bring your loved ones in? Is that I, I, I can understand. That I can understand the part where they don't want to trigger me again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you, yeah. you can play with your yeah, mind a little yeah. bit, you know? Yeah. So they kept it for quiet, then... There was a moment where me and my dad sat down and he was sat in my bed and he looked at me. He was like, are you okay? I said, I'm okay. I just want to know you know, when I'm going home. Um, so he said, you're not going to go home for the time being here, but you're going to be here for a while. And I said, mm-hmm. why? He said, that because you had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. I was like, no way. I said, yeah, you had a heart attack. I'm like, you serious? I almost, I'm, I'm asking him like, are yeah. you serious? Said, yeah, yeah. Fabrice, you, were, you had a heart attack. I was like, oh, okay. I sat down for a bit and it's like, wow, this is... But now I realize how well so many people were coming to see mm. me and the message was mm. coming in. But they kept me literally away from everybody so mm. that they can just protect me. I said, I was there for about, uh, for four weeks. I was mm. in intensive care for four weeks. Within that three weeks, I wasn't able to urinate or to do any, nothing. Right. Because my kidney just yeah. stopped working. Yeah. Was you in pain? No, it just, because that stopped, yeah. it affected a lot of things right. down here. Yeah, so yeah. when this is start to work, the kidney was the last thing. Yeah, wow. So this finger won't become like this size. So if you put your hand in there, you leave your fingerprint in, I can see like your fingerprint in there. Yeah. So everything just went <laughs> And the doc was like, you know, we're trying everything we can just to make sure your kidney kicked in and everything. Yeah. And the best part was me going to the toilet. That was the best news. I mean, like, <laughs> I, it just felt like a, a relief, yeah. like, re- out of everything, that was yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. In terms of getting back to normality. Just to get back to normality. Step, you know. Yeah. I had a wire in my neck. <clears throat> if you see it, there's like a scar here. Yeah. Yeah. That was where blood was coming in. So I had mm. that. That was another thing where I was like, why isn't it still here? Mm. You know, it, we're just trying to get it to the right place. Did oh. they? Sorry, is, cool. it, is it called? It's cardiomyopathy. Myopathy, right? yeah. And have you got the defibrillator? I got it. Yeah, because yeah, like that just you know going on because he's affected. We've chatted yeah, about we this. My about, yeah. um, we lost my brother-in-law to the same mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Similar, he was a footballer, mm-hmm. Mitchell, and um, you know he, he was 27. He retired at 25. Yeah, told he didn't get the defibrillator in, and he uh, you know he he, he he killed over, but he wasn't in a mm-hmm. in a where Fabrice yeah. was where he yeah. had the help. You know, and it, it, you know, it's obviously it's harrowing that effect on yeah. family. So for people who listeners who might, you know, you know, go and get checked that, yeah. you know, the defibrillator is an option, isn't it? And, and, I always, it, I always, I always say to people, if you have a chance to get an ICD put in, yeah. don't even think about it twice. Yeah, you know, the best way to describe it is a seat belt. You only need a seat belt if you're in an accident because mm. yeah. it stops you from coming out mm-hmm. to hit the window. Yeah, that's what an ICD do. Wow. Yeah. So when you're going for that episode, it will give you a shock. And you come down and you yeah. go back again. Wow. Mm. That's amazing. the way to describe it. Yeah. You, know. you both mentioned there the level of support that mm-hmm. both of you had. But Fabrice, was you was you totally overwhelmed when you see obviously looking back at it, yeah. you did fans up and down mm. the country singing your name, especially when you were getting carried off the pitch. Yeah. I mean at that a min, a, a, that that time then. But you know, there was it was it was national, wasn't it? Mm. It was incredible because like, you know, I had the Pope, 
left me a voice message. <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, how, <laughs> how was the funny part? How did that come about? I, Do you I know picked up the phone and my wife was like, oh, you've got a message, you need to listen to this. Yeah. And I listened to it, I was like, do I think what I think it is? She said, yes, that's him. So like, the guy from Rome? He said, yes, that's him. <laughs> yeah. said, wow. Wasn't he, uh, he was a goalkeeper as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 The Pope was a goalie, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, no bit of knowledge just dropping <laughs> for you there, just in case. And I was supposed to play in the Olympic that year. Yeah. yeah. And, right. And sure sort out the team. So mm. he told me like, whatever you go over the summer, I suggest you to cancel it and because you're gonna be in the team. Yeah. So now to be part of the Olympic team was a bit yeah, yeah. helpful, but I was just happy that the support was incredible. And I mean, yeah. from the top guys on the tree, from FIFA, UEFA, you know, Arsene, everybody came to see me. And then uh, I said, I was always thankful for that. Amazing. Ain't, ain't it incredible like our human story like that just brings the whole of yeah. football together, yeah. you know, like you, everything gets, when it's life and death like yeah, that, yeah. Every, everything comes together and football mm. is a family. At the end oh of the yeah, day. yeah. But it takes something like that to, to remind us all, don't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. In, in recovery and, and, and further beyond that, you, you didn't rest on your laurels, did you? I mean, you've said it, you went to uni, you got a BA in sports journalism, you've done media work, yeah. you've done a bit of coaching. Where, where, where do you see yourself? I would love to get back in going. coaching, to be honest with you. And I think for me, people have aspiration to coach for a big team. Mm. For me, I'll be so happy if I coach Bolton. Seriously, really? If I yeah. go back and... What a story. If oh. I can go back and work for that football club, I would... Yeah, that's for me. That's just the icing mm. and the cake for everything. When you say what coaching, or would you, or you talking about head coach, manager? Yeah, yeah. To me, it would be just dream come true. Amazing, mm. you what? know, because it's just they went above beyond. Wow, you know. So when mm. I was in hospital, you know, I had so many shirts <laughs> signed from for Fabrice and left it in 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 in, in, in the stadium. When I came home, mm. I've I've got every single one of them to this day. Wow, every single one of them. So for me, I was like. If it, if it's gonna happen, that has to be yeah. the one for me. Have you got an opportunity mm. to go back into Bolton? I mean, I'm, yes, I, I've, I've been speaking. I've been speaking to the, the the new academy manager, and hopefully we mm. can find some Brilliant. common ground, and then we can come back in and work for the club. Well, if they see, if they listen to your journey, you know, and you know where you know, like mm. you said, coming to England at eleven, yeah. not having the language, <laughs> do what you did at Hale End, you know, look, I have no doubt that you, if you put your mind to it, you'll become yeah. a top. Top coach, top manager. It's a role model I mean, for every. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, I, I'm just thinking now. If I was in the club now, you, I'd, I'd want you in there talking mm. to the lads, like, because your your story and you forget the incident um, with the heart. Just your story before that is incredible yeah. as well. Yeah. One player I want to talk about is Christian Eriksen. He's mm. back playing yep. uh, at Brentford. We could see him in action against Newcastle this weekend. Fabrice, <laughs> I mean, having seen what and experienced what you've gone through. Yeah. First of all, how hard was it watching the Euros and seeing what happened to Ericsson and, you know, could you, I, I, you really know what, relate I, to that? For, for me, when I watched, I was like, I was hoping he'd just come through. That's my only concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he left the stadium being awake, mm. that's for me, it was probably the best news of Euro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, sure. he, he didn't want to move the focus away from the mm. game into that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, that's the best thing out of it. Going forward, I said, I was down longer than he was down. Mm. He recovered quicker than I did recover. Yeah. He has an ICD, I have an ICD. Mm. So there's a lot of things favor towards him. Mm -hmm. mm. But at the end of the day is the medical situation, there's those who decide what's good for him. Yeah. It's all down to individual. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I said that I wish him nothing but all the best luck yeah. in the world. And I hope he, he stays. My me for me, I just I, yeah. as long as he's safe. That's the most important. And, and, and you're right as well, go like, on top of my opinion on it, I just think as well, you know, if he wants to, like, everyone, every man should be allowed the freedom to do what they want. Yeah. If he feels it's yeah. right, like, yeah. we wish him all the best. Yeah. I just, and, and by the way, on top of all that, he he is one of the, he is a, he's a great player, isn't oh, he? Do you know, lovely football. fantastic yeah, footballer, yeah, do you know I what I mean? And I, we, and I do jet, like, I wish him all the best and I'm happy yeah. for him. And I just, you just, you know, you want him to be happy and, yeah. you know, he feels he's right. So good. We do wish them all the best. Yeah. Uh, let's talk Premier League because Brentford do face Newcastle uh, mm. in a massive fixture this weekend. Yeah. Brentford haven't won in five games, whereas Newcastle are now undefeated in their yeah. last five games. You know, what I like, what I, you know what I like about Newcastle? They've got different dimension now. Yeah. yeah. There's not like they can't play, they can yeah. go bang root yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's, change it up. That's a, it's, people used to have a digger, people like Sam Allardyce, yeah, Tony yeah. Pulis, one, mm. one, one root football. Mm. You've seen Man City do it. Yeah. Where 
Henderson get it and he just yeah. bang and yeah. everybody yeah. just play for man. And I think you keep set maximum happy. Mm-hmm. You keep the back four happy. Mm-hmm. You have a good chance. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. I, I, I watched them. Sid, I did the game against. Well, it was excellent against yeah. West Ham. They um, they looked. You wouldn't have put it this way. You wouldn't have known which team was going for Europe and which team was fighting really? for relegation. I, I was. I've been a big advocate for him on this. I, I think Eddie. I'm really a big fan of Eddie. I think he's got him playing. I think even Chris Wood, it's not quite happened for him, but you're right. He, just having him on the pitch, that presence, presence yeah. Sh- yeah. like straight away they they they, they connected some pass. Shelby got it. Wood peeled off on that on the the, um, the far centre half. You know, it went up, bang. Then they was on the second balls, and this was without Saint Maxim because yeah. he yeah. was injured. Mm-hmm. Add him to the mix. Yeah, I think no danger. I think they're going to get out of it, Newcastle. I think Brentford could get sucked into yeah. it. Yeah, they need they, they, they need to turn Brentford. it around. Do you think? Do you think this that's is, the only, where's this one go in this game? The only thing for me which possibly could save Brentford from being sucked in is that that stadium. That's something stadium, else, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. a proper yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. Whoever designed that stadium, that might be giving them four or five points that keeps them up. But you know? if, if you stop if you stop the front the front two at Brentford, yeah, and you stop the the set pieces, mm. they don't have many answer to mm. it. They don't really bring others. When you have Newcastle, when you have an exciting Maximus mm. on the right on the left hand yeah. side, right hand side, yeah. come at you. Yeah, you know he's, the, a, he's a good player, and he? he's got unbelievable agility. You don't know he's feeling like fall down. He's gonna come yeah. down. I love him. I, I like in the, in the era when we get accused of having like um, sausage factory players, they're all the same. Everyone does it. Yeah. Sorry, that's my analogy. <laughs> sausage factory. All the sausages are the same. Do you know what I mean? Sam Maxim, right? Sam <laughs> <laughs> Maxim. He's a maverick. So I yeah. love watching him. Yeah. Like I'm like I don't want to go to a game. And no, right, I know what right, in the midfield is going to get it, it's going to receive it there, pass it to him, and then he's going to go and then they're going to rotate. You know, all that over sanitized football. Yeah. I want to see, like, I want to see that raw. Have you seen the video ability. of him? Ability. Have you seen the video of him in training where he gave him the ball on the left hand side? You can hear Steve Bruce say, pass, pass, pass. <laughs> he kept dribbling, dribbling, and he usually yeah. just slot in the back of the net. Really? You're like, there we are. That's and he said, what would that? And you're like, okay. Yeah, what you were saying. That's uncoachable. It's uncoachable. And it's, it's un- in our job, as a, as a pundit, it's even like, I had to do a, a, an analysis on him, and I'm like, like well, what do you say about that? Like, he, he does the wrong things in the wrong area, and then he gets out of it. Yeah. And it, and it but there's so much improvement to make. And yeah. I love the fact that he says, I want to be a Ballon d'Or winner. And, and people, might think, people might think to themselves, mate, you're playing for Newcastle in a relegation battle. Like, relax. Yeah. I'm mm. like, I love that. Because I think it, he's, got, he's got some ability, yeah. and I just love watching him play. He's a maverick. And I think he'll, be, I think he'll keep him up. Well, talking of players that are not sausage factory workers, let's, let's, let's talk. <laughs> no, no, no. About let, me, uh, let me let me nail down on my analogy here, right? A sausage factory is what I use when it's something's the same. Because if you a sausage factory, the whole point of it, you have to make the sausage the same. Yeah. You? You, you know yeah. what I mean? You can't have like. Say you went in there, you bought. <laughs> I'm going down a tangent here. I love a tangent, right? If you got you, like, you want your, you don't you want the sausage the same. Yeah. You're worried, wouldn't you? Like, you want a bit different. You, like you got the herb and the meat. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, well, let's talk about spicy sausages. Right. So Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, Man City, a uh, little bit of a slip up for City on the weekend. Do you see Liverpool catching them or put, put a bit of pressure on it them, put, surely? Put a bit of pressure on them, surely. But this Man City team, I can't see them dropping another... I can't see them getting beat twice. Yeah. They might lose again. Can't, and I, you know, Liverpool have still got some big games to play. But at the same time, City have to go to Anfield. Yeah, they don't like Kurt, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a bit of a, and sitting yeah. to play United as well. True, true. You know, so I, I feel like when when Pep takes City to United to yeah. Liverpool, he literally changed yeah. the whole set of mm-hmm. team because they're more defensively attuned with each yeah, other. And yeah, it was if you remember the, the the game that they play on Christmas Day or New Year's Eve, they can't play like that against Liverpool because Liverpool will just yeah, the crowd yeah. alone will probably eat them alone. Mm. And I'm going to ask you a question, Sis, right? Because my Liverpool park it, you know, Jurgen Klopp, he's mm-hmm. been there six or seven years. Yeah. He's won two trophies, right? He's won the two big ones. Do you think he needs to add trophies to his to resume? To, do you know what I mean? Like, to, to be classed... Yeah. Great, this team to be classed a great team. Uh, yeah. They need to have multiple Premier Leagues, uh, yeah. like Man City. Yeah, no, you're, I, I, I believe so, because he's, he's, put, he's put there at the moment because Liverpool mm. waited so long. Yeah, he's yeah, done yeah. it in such a short yeah. space of time in terms of yeah. going back-to-back near enough yeah, yeah. And, and doing it. But to like you've listen, you've performed at the highest yeah. level for a number of years and you've won accolades and, and top trophies. And to be classed as the best, you need to do yeah. it over a period of time. Yeah, yeah. But you have to give him credit because he's... 
He's bringing a lot of young players through. Yeah, yeah. He's, that's you know that's what you you and then also the to be able to spot the talent of Mane, you know mm. Salah, mm. the guys like Jota, Jota, amazing. Yeah, yeah. You didn't see that happening, but mm. we all know Salah now because yeah. of you know, you mm. know Jurgen. We all know mm. Mane because of Jurgen because he has assembled. You you could see straight away from his first from his first game, he knew mm. he was having savage. He knew he was having yeah, certain individual yeah, like yeah, yeah. They're, they're good. Not for me, they're yeah. not for me. Yeah, yeah. So he decided in that samba, get rid of when yeah. get rid of and yeah, bring that yeah. team, and then all of a sudden they just yeah. But, you know, I, I, I'm a massive fan of it. Like, I'm just a massive fan of it. I was just sit, coming in today just thinking about Liverpool and I just thought it will be a shame if that group of players, how good they are, yeah. don't go and win multiple yeah. leagues. Like, you know, And it will be a shame for Jürgen because yeah. he's developed them. They, they, but I do think they need to mm. win trophies. I think he'll, be, I think he'll, he'll say that yeah. himself if you asked him as well. Well, look, let's give you some coral odds. If you think Newcastle will beat Brentford 1-0 and Chris Wood to score the first goal or the only goal of the game, Coral will give you odds of 25-1. to 1. Uh, If you think Everton will lose 3-1 to Man City, it's 10-1. to 1. Chelsea face Liverpool in mm. the League Cup on Sunday. That's going to be the pick of the Coral Super Series. So I'm going to ask you both four questions each right. uh, about what? this game. It's One word on. answers. It's kicking off Sunday yeah. at 4.30. Joe, you are currently beating the guest... Nine eight. Oh, so this really is all to play. I don't for like this purpose. already because that's that. Don't like <laughs> so this. You, no, 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 no. Has, has already. How has he already won nine? No, he's played nine games. He so, won nine of the eight of them. Yeah. So out of the shows we've done, the yeah. questions that I'm going to ask, he's got nine right. So which means he's already seen the question before mm. this anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's the same. <laughs> it's question. generic. It's generic. Don't worry. You, you, so, quick word answers. Okay. Go on. Uh, so it's the. Did you want to? We let the guests go first. It's the League Cup final. Yeah. All right. It's Chelsea versus Liverpool on Sunday. Right. Uh, who will win the match? Liverpool. Chelsea. Of course. Yeah. Who will score the first goal? Salah. Oh, this is quick. This is like this is on the buzzer <laughs> round, isn't it? Um, ooh, let me go. Havertz. Okay. How many corners will there be in the game? Ten. Nine, I'm going to go. I'm not going to go 11. I'm going to change it you know, up. You know what Joe's doing? Yeah. <laughs> he said, let's have a little hat and hat. I've changed my tactics, mate. It's competitive now. We're getting to the business end of the season. I want to win. This game can get tasty. How many cards will there be in the game? I'll go first for a piece. For the interest of fairness, I'm going to say five. I think it will be feisty. I'll say three. Okay, close. Very good. Um, right, people at home, if you want to play along, you can do. Just head over to coral.co.uk, answer the questions correctly to win the cash prizes, but please, please gamble responsibly. Uh, that's it. That's what we've got time for. Fabrice, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure, Thank you mate. to have you on. Um, Thank you. And yeah, let's just going back on your story, I know you're going into, or you was going into clubs yeah. and you've been speaking to, yeah. to, to youngsters and academy people, but please, please get back into football and, and yes. the, the Bolton shout. I mean, if that can happen, you can get I said, your... I said, I have a meeting with the academy manager next week, so we'll see what happens. I don't know. Yeah. And 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 if, if it happened, great. If not, then, you know, we'll carry on. It's no problem at all. I have oh. no doubt you'll get to where you need to go. No, no sure doubt. Yeah. I mean, a million percent to start in the uh, in, in the academy and yeah. like say, you know, yeah. Yeah. a shining light to youngsters coming through now. They need a, a figurehead like you for sure. And if you can do that at the start and then go up the ladder and be a first team coach and it'd be absolutely amazing so we wish you all the best thank you thank you for having me guys uh, remember you can find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from you have been listening to All To Play For brought to you by Joe and Coral we'll see you on the next one you've been watching All To Play For brought to you by Joe and Coral